So another very important reaction for the MCAT in terms of the OCHEM um, is SN2 versus SN1. And we'll look later in E2 and E1 as well. Uh, but for this lecture, it's going to be SN2 versus SN1. Right? So the first thing we're going to do is just look at their basic reactions. So we see in SN2, what happens is uh, pretty much this nucleophile is going to replace this halogen. Right? And we see that it's an inversion of stereochemistry. Right? In SN1, we see that uh, this OH is going to replace the halogen, uh, but it's going to be a racemic mixture. So let's see how that happens. So pretty much the SN2 is very, very simple. We have a lone pair of electrons right here. What's going to happen is it's going to do something called a backside attack. All right? So it's going to attack from the back because there's less steric hindrance. And what's going to happen is this OH will be um, now from the reverse direction. All right? Pretty simple. Now SN1, what happens there? So the first step in, in SN1 is we're going to form a carbocation. All right? So this Br is going to leave. So we'll, we'll, we'll get this Br minus right there. Um, and what's going to happen is this H2O is going to react now. But notice, this is a carbocation. It's sp2. All right? If it's sp2, it's 120 degrees. There's an equal preference for going from the forward or coming from the back. All right? Either way, we're going to get both products as going to be from the front or also from the back. Um, and I, I skipped the deprotonation step, but you guys can figure out how we got from H2O just down to OH. But pretty much, um, it's going to be one in the back and one in the front. So that's why we get this racemic mixture. All right? So if you can just have this very basic understanding of what SN2 versus SN1 um, in terms of the mechanism, I think you guys can handle that. So we'll go on to actually um, the important, more important part, which is actually all those definitions and key points. So on to these key points for SN2 versus SN1. So the first thing we're going to be talking about um, is the name. So the name is for SN2, it gets the name because it's a bimolecular nucleophilic substitution. Um, and what that relates to is the fact that this rate is dependent on the nucleophile and also on the electrophile. Right? Versus the unimolecular nucleophilic substitution, which is SN1, only depends on the concentration of the electrophile. Right? So that's the importance of these names right here. Right? So in terms of stereochemistry, we saw that um, it was inverted because of the backside attack in SN2. Um, and it was a racemic mixture in SN1 due to the carbocation formed. For, sub, for SN2, in terms of reactivity, we have primary being the first most reactive and tertiary being the last. And that's just due to steric hindrance. It's going to be harder to do a backside attack when you have all these molecules blocking you. Right? That's why tertiary is the least reactive. And the other way is different. Because remember when we went over carbocation stability, uh, tertiary was the most stable. That's why it's going to be the most reactive. Okay? The, the, the carbocation um, in the tertiary position is going to want to be formed most likely. That's why um, now this tertiary carbocation will form um, our final molecule. Okay. A carbocation, which one's formed? SN2? No. SN1? Yes. And that contributed to the racemic mixture and also the reactivity. Okay. In terms of conditions, what are the conditions that are favored? Um, and it's a non bulky good nucleophile uh, for SN2. And SN1 is a poor nucleophile. So what exactly are all these um, non-bulky good nucleophile and poor nucleophile. So this is, you know, a very, very, very generalized way of memorizing this. Uh, but for the MCAT, it's what you, it's what's going to help you. Okay, non-bulky good nucleophile. You can think of negative charge. If it's small and it's negative, let's just say that it's a good nucleophile and it's non-bulky. Uh, poor nucleophile is going to have neutral charge generally, so it's going to be neutral and it's going to be rather small. All right, so if we see some examples of that, uh, we'll see here OCH3 minus, CH3 minus, the halogens, um, OR minus, OH minus are going to be non bulky good nucleophiles. Um, poor nucleophiles, neutral, generally H2O, um, alcohols. All right? So that's, very, that's, that's a warning right there that is, is very, very general. But for the MCAT's purpose, that's probably going to be all you need to know. Because if you want to memorize all the, the nucleophiles, because there's more than this that do um, SN2, and there's obviously more than this that do SN1. But if you want to memorize all of them, you know, go ahead, but it's, it's going to waste a lot of time. 
Right, so just let's let's go with negative charge. Um, generally, in the general sense, a negative and small non-bulky good nucleophile. All right. Now on to the solvents. All right. For the solvents, um, for SN2 is going to be aprotic and polar. SN1 is going to be protic polar. All right. So what does that mean? Aprotic, no hydrogen bonding. Protic, there's hydrogen bonding. All right. So for example, we have right here, you know, acetone, and we have DMSO for SN2. And for SN1, we have stuff like water, alcohol, you know, anything that can do hydrogen bonding. All right. So if we know these basic things, you know, a lot of memorization, but I think you can find that, you know, they're fairly um, intuitive. You can kind of piece through them and, and it shouldn't be too bad to memorize.